Welcome back everybody, we are here reviewing the 3.0 update that's just come out recently on the Xbox, uh, I believe today, 6.6 .6 gig update, so get your internet ready. It's going to be due to be sorted out tomorrow, uh, that being on the 26th of May. There will be some downtime associated with it, but what I'm going to be showing you on this one is just a brief description of the maps that are being remade, some of the tanks are being removed and replaced, and some questionable nerfs, some questionable buffs, and some questionable nerfs and buffs that haven't actually been added into the game. So we're going to start off with the replacement for the Panzer Panther, it's like a tier 7 light. Um, it's going to be sorted out and, and removed and returned with, uh, I believe the pronunciation may be incorrect, but Spachanzer, uh, whether it could be or not I don't know, but re irrelevant to that. People are already querying about the actual tank's ability to be in a game very well, uh, whether it'll actually do well or not is a process to be seen, although whether you like it or not it's still going to be changed. Pretty much anything you'll actually see different in the way it's moved or, or changed about is the fact that it'll just be in the air in your garage. So how it plays, well you just have to have a look on the forums and see people's reactions to it. And going on further down we've got some changes to low tier American tanks. Not really much of a queryable aspect of it, so to speak. I mean they're, they're just like tier 2 tanks. Some of the TDs are really really good at that dual tier. The T-18 HMC has got some trolley trolley armour at the front at least, and it does bounce quite a bit. And one of the other changes is the T-57 Tier 2 artillery is being removed, uh, replaced with the T-1 HMC. Again, it is not really something a lot of people would be too fussed about, whether it's a a good thing or a bad thing. They're, t they're low tier, so you, you're probably going to be able to get past them relatively quickly. <coughs> they're what some of the tanks actually look like. Moving on to the updated maps, you can see Highway, Prokhorovka, Karelia, Sacred Valley, Sand River and Westfield are going to get some Remakes, <clears throat> you'll see Dragon Ridge is not included within that. I suppose it will be soon, TM. Uh, as regards to the plans for it, they are going to be looking to lower the map because it's an absolute pain to actually play. Although, to be perfectly honest, Sacred Valley does need a big, big change. I'm not too happy with the uh, the war map variants of that. It's quite some OP spawns. I'm going to be moving on to the achievements and trophies that you can get for both Xbox and PS4. Some combined, relatively-ish to get. They show me the money achievement, you're going to probably look at doing it in a premium tank because <clears throat> you have to get it without the ops going as well so uh, it's looking likely to be, not be firing premium at all in them games but you can also get some other trophies associated with PS4 along with the Xbox only's uh, there for you as well. The in-game sorting and filtering <coughs> is just going to be a, a garage option to be able to see tanks specifically for the stats um, we're just going to go past that one at the moment because it's not really of a massive interest. The download sizes for the for the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 you can actually see. Um, I think mine was 6.6 .6, so I don't know where the 7.1 is coming from but it, it may vary for whatever reason. As regards the actual update that's carried out tomorrow I believe that's just all done on their side. The, the two hours downtime is negligible, I mean you'll probably be doing something else while it's happening. We're going through to the updated maps, just a, a key looking improvement. You can see that one of the main things they do like to add is it is different things within the area. So you've got a different cover, you've got added rocks, removing rocks. Um, sometimes they add in rocks to break line of sight, which I believe they're doing with uh, Pacific Island at some point as well. But you can just have a quick view of what they're actually going to be doing. The, the link to this will be in the description below, so you'll have a, a good chance to have a good read through. You will need at least an hour or something to read through everything. There is so much that they're actually putting in. Then it's no wonder it's such a large, large jump. The changes to the maps, which aren't like you're adding of rocks or removing things or or changing it per se, is mainly to do with the spawns that they're doing on some maps like your Malinovka, your Northwest. There are some very OP spawn starts on some specific game modes. So you're talking like Encounter or War maps. For some reason, they they thought uh, specifically be speaking, if you're on about Fisherman's Bay War. The spawn in the, the north east side of the map is sort of closer to the water than what it is on the other side. If you were to be like a normal encounter battle or a normal normal map, uh, it's those things that are looking to be updated so you can see what's actually being changed in terms of where, where they're actually spawning. As we carry on moving down, the bug fixes as well just go, go through quite a lot of the, the bases, but what we're going to do is move on to, as you can see, there's a lot. 
the changes to some of the tanks that are actually going through nerfs and buffs. Specifically looking at things like your tier 10 tanks because there are very, very, um, not so much overpowered, but very, very easy tanks to play. Uh, you can see the, the base of the Chinese tanks going through. So you things like your, your health and accuracy and reload and things like that, they are generally looking to get a, an overall buff uh, specifically related to the packages they've got as well as um, overall fully upgraded versions. One of the more interesting looks is the Fosh uh, TDs in um, reduced in terms of their gun range and their ability to be able to remain undetected after they'd fired. That's looking to be a bit of a, a queryable one, um, more on the basis that you, you've seen buffs being changed to tier 10 TDs but the waffle is still not being changed at all. <clears throat> and even the, in the PC it's been removed completely because it is ridiculously broken on the back that you can just go in and, and drop 3000 damage from your 6th clip and if you're able to do that on tanks that aren't looking at you, you can change the change the battle with one tank. A minute reload is, is negligible if you're able to get to cover it and hide for that amount of time to then drop it again. It's really really good for that reason. As we carry on going down as you can see again so many changes specifically towards terrain resistance, the gun dispersion, reload times, uh, how long the view range is, another one that's quite quite big. One of the other changes which you can see here is yes, the, the 5CA, this view range is getting a massive decrease from 400 to 340 meters. That tank is very very good at its tier in terms of its ability to pen and do damage and now you're reducing its view range from well 60 meters. I mean that that's going to be need to be put back up with binos and coast optics and things if you want to get that back. Whether you do that or not, I don't know, and how well that's going to affect the tank is <clears throat> questionable. One of the other things I do like is the AMX Chaffee in its view range being increased, although that it doesn't find itself in tier 10s. Passive scouting could be a good thing, but then you might find a medium is going to be doing a better job. A lot of the tier 7 and 8 light tanks have started to fill that role, so you don't really see it on a regular basis. We're going to go down to slightly past this quite a few changes specifically towards your, your Leopards and your Panther 2s. The, they aren't changing too much in, in terms of normal tanks, heavies and all that. You, a lot of the changes I'm seeing are caused to TDs. Specifically like the Nash one in your meal. But one of the other changes which I liked was the VK30D is actually getting slightly better in terms of its ability to actually play the game. I mean, the, this goes on to Leopard PTA which is not at all a very good medium tank for its tier compared to what's around it. So any kind of buffs that it can add to these tanks and others up that line would be very much appreciated. I think I stopped playing it after this one and just I've just gone down the Panther line towards the E50M because um it's so much better. One hundred percent so much better. <clears throat> there are some other changes, there are some on track events to the British heavy line. So you got like your going up from your black prints up to your um uh, F two one five B. There, it's if I can find it. Uh, there's the Burt Achilles Challenger. I think I've gone past it to be perfectly honest. I will find it again. Like I said, this is such a large update. Everything is absolutely everywhere, and it doesn't give you a key of where things genuinely are. I know past it. So there we go. So you got mainly displayed armors being being changed. <clears throat> the last value is sort of the thing that you tend to see changed aside from the turret armor. On the Conqueror there, Mark II is uh, saying it, it's just been buffed. That's the only thing that looks to be changed for the HD models. There are a lot of HD tanks being brought into it, so they'll look pretty. I mean, whether that's something you'll actually like, I don't know. I'd, I'd prefer to see changes to the actual tank where it makes it balanced, so to speak, or, or a better play. We move on to the US line, which is ones I've got a lot of tanks for, so there are a few which would make a difference. One of the things I'm more interested in than anything else is the M46 pattern. I played this tank <clears throat> moving up to the M48 and I stopped playing it because I didn't enjoy how much the turret armour got penned on a regular basis. And it looks to be that for being fully upgraded, the aim has been dis the decreased, the actual aim time itself. And that was another fact was that you couldn't really pop out and shoot people and, and actually get a shot off before you were screwed having a, a decrease in the time, especially for the 105, is going to help that. And you're, you're starting to see that on the, the larger turrets as well, when you're fully upgraded, not only having a name time to speed, but the shot dispersion as well is going down. 
albeit not by very much, but it's still very, very useful. The only problem is that the it looks to be the displayed armor value is the only thing changed on that, but the actual accuracy name time is going to be the one thing that maybe tempts me back because I do technically need to complete it along with a, a couple of others. You are also seeing with the other close ones to tier 9, and tier 10s, um, just basically the displayed armor. The Super Pershing and the Freedom are the other big updates that they're doing in terms of the premium tanks. So you're seeing the upper or the upper front plate is being changed in its effective armor to 287. The lower front plate is looking to have a, a slight nerf down to 287. That lower front plate is very, very, very bouncy on a regular basis for a lot of tanks of any tier. And it's a it sort of thing where you only have to aim at the rockets on the hull, but you have to be a really <clears throat> quick, good shot to actually get accuracy on them. And that's the same for the Freedom. They're both pretty much exactly the same tank. You get a slight health increase as well, <clears throat> so 1,200. I don't know exactly what 40 down, well, 40 hit points are actually going to do, but there are going to be very very few occasions when you're going to have 39 HP and be like, I'm glad that update came out for that. And you can see the very top and bottom of the front hull uh, is roughly 40 millimeters worth than before the change. So it provides better protection for your upper hull if you want to go hull down, but let's be honest, the lower front plate of those tanks isn't exactly easy to pen. The other thing which I'm not too happy about is the E4 itself has got nothing really much changed to it, whereas the E3 has. Aside from the view range going down, to which I'm not too fussed about, because in, in most respects there's not a lot of times I find myself deliberately being out of range of people. I do try to get myself spotted, say, uh, in the case where I'm, I'm going forward, if people know where I am and I'm able to avoid artillery, they're less likely to want to engage, or, or they are likely to bounce, but they're less likely to do anything in terms of move forward, they'll only move back. So the change to the reload time is something of a annoyance is a, a short way of putting it. I would prefer to see if that's going to be changed, a lot of the other TDs being changed to tier 10s, but you're not just seeing it in this update at all. It could come out late today, it might not. I'd, I'd rather see it actually change to a lot of them. I don't see the E4s being changed, so whether they see the E4 as being a weaker tank, I don't know. The actual fact it has a turret that turns is kind of... I'd, I'd, Personally, I don't think it should. If, if they're going to change one, they should change quite a few, and it doesn't look to be the case that they are. So, we'll, we'll see how that goes. I mean, even with all your BIA and uh, Gunrammer and, and Vents and all that, at the moment it's around about 14, 15 seconds. So the reload time will go down to about 17 from its standard 19, or roughly around about that area. We're then going on to the Bulldog, which absolutely poos all over the T49, this is another big one because you are seeing quite a lot of them. The standard APCR along with the reload and great fire and the amount of damage it can do makes it a very very good tank. So to have it going down in terms of its reload is quite a big deal. I know it doesn't seem like very much, I mean the the 76mm gun is not something of, a, of an interest, people will go for the, the rate of fire so the M32 lay on the, the full upgrade is 76mm. Having that change from 3.5 to 4.3 you are going to see that difference. You are going to see a very big difference in the way that people play and what they can and can't do. So the, that'll be interesting to see it actually played in real life. I mean, how how much of a difference it will make to people's play styles is the main one. You're not going to have bulldogs running around everywhere, but we'll we'll see. I mean, that that's not one I'd 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 like either. I I think it was a very good tank. I never had any issues with it as much as I did with other tanks. The T30 was a tank I used to play and came off uh, looking at it again because it's tier 9 but we're also going to look at it alongside the T95 because they're both very similar in terms of the, the damage rolls but they play differently in that one is a big hunk of armour the other one's more of a mobility one but not as scary so you, you're seeing the the decrease factors for all of them pretty much every every gun and in, in every part of the tank they, they're looking to change the T30 was not one I preferred to play because of the issues I had with people hitting my hull, it's like the T29 um, actual turret and, and things on top and it was still being penned but I think with the changes specifically to uh, accuracy and the gun dispersion is one thing that always you sort of appreciate it more when you're actually able to hit stuff when you're only aiming in for say one and a half seconds or two because you, that circle is always going to be tighter than what it is as if it was say 0.39 as it was before so that might take me back to, to play the tank again I did get quite a bit of XP, so that'll be uh, another fun and interesting one to try and, and see how the changes go. The other ones you're looking 
the, it, these ones are specifically related to people who play the tank and you see them regularly in the game. So one of the other changes is the KB2. The rotation speed of the turret is going down. It's looking to be a bit of a hmm query because that's not exactly a uh, a good rotating turret to start with. And you're looking at changing it. So it's uh, looking to be slightly buffed in a, in a way. Uh, whether you'll actually have, again, see a notice in it, possibly. It doesn't seem like very much, but only in the times when you actually see it being surrounded by other tanks will you, you see a difference to it. I mean, the aim time is still going to be looking to be the same when you, you're going to spurs and all that, if you derpy derpy gun. How well are you going to see that played in the game? Maybe on close quarter maps rather than large ones. The other one you tend to see flying around is the M25. Uh, they are looking to be slightly buffed in terms of its aim time being decreased, shot dispersion being released. It's one of those tanks that you see flying about a lot, so I think it will help people snapshot and all just RB onto a target, lock onto a target and, and surround it and go round. Also, if you want to passive scout as well, you hope you'll have the option for that and being able to actually hit stuff might be slightly easier. Although the shell velocity is still going to stay the same, so you need to lead them shots. <coughs> one of the other big changes you can see the object 268 and the 263, the TDs. The invisibility factors on both being reduced. Uh, the other one being that the, re the reverse speed on the 268 is being decreased from 18 to 15, so it's slightly less to, re uh, to reverse back, but at the same time it's still got its camera range, so unless you're actually really close to it, it's still going to be detect uh, undetectable. And the view range on the 263 is being changed 410 to 390. With the perks and the crew you can get, probably negligible based on what people will tend to use it for. It's probably still going to be able to spot stuff, and even even going down to 390 or reducing to 20 meters, you'd probably still be there or there, thereabouts with about 420, 430 if you have all the stuff on it. And keep on going down. The tier 9 was the other one I wanted to look at, specifically the 704, because of the view range being reduced by such a large margin. When you start getting into the range of the 360, it's a standard view range for tier 9 tanks. It's more of a case of, okay, I'm certainly more of a disadvantage against people that are coming towards me. If you're sat in a bush and you're being spotted by, say, a light tank that's got 390 view range, i.e. the Amex Chaffee, you're going to be in a case of, right, I fired, I'm now going to be detected by it, so do I fire, do I not? That That's quite a big, big nerf to it, if I'm perfectly honest. I mean, it is, I'd prefer to see it not a bigger drop, at least, if they are going to change stuff. It seems to be, I, I don't know what the complaints were for, to actually reduce it by 30 metres. That's, that's still quite a bit. The rest of it looked pretty much exactly the same, but that when when they change things like the meters or the view range, it is going to be something that you'll you'll see up more often, and it'll take you a bit of time to get used to it. You rely on your team. We all know how good teams are on this. The ISA is another big one that's going to be changed along with the T six two A. We'll just get to that in a second. The ISA I haven't seen as being a problem tank. The lower front plate is something which is. Um, Still easy to pen, even a you know, like a premium tank, a tier eight or something is e still easy to pen. Sometimes it can give you a bit of issues if you don't use premium ammo, but still the, the same. It, it's <clears throat> unless angled correctly, it's not really that good. So to see that there are some dispersion factors in terms of its rotation and, and movement, I haven't played it yet. I will get around to playing it and I'll see see how good it is. But I do know people who actually play the ISA or have played it, and we'll be able to see a difference in the two, and we'll be able to get there their version of it. <coughs> the OP T six two A, nothing is changing very much in terms of at least for the, the HD model you can see. Uh, it's still just gonna be as, as good as what it always was. Some of the other changes you can see the SU 152 uh, that's your tier seven uh, Russian T D with the big BL well the big derpy derpy gun. The invisibility is looking to be decreased. It seems to be quite a consistent thing along with the Russian TDs is that their invisibility after being shot has been decreased on pretty much all of them. One of the things that the Russian TDs have, regardless of having some trolley armor when you shoot them because of the way it's angled, they're still relatively lightly armored and they're still likely to be penned. So to have a, a tank that's likely to be spotted is not very useful, especially on the basis that you're relying on the camouflage and the invisibility of your tank to actually avoid being shot at. So that will be I, I, I don't know, I'd, I'd watch out on the forums to see how that goes. Uh, the last part is going towards your Japanese line in terms of your, your, your small, medium, so your Chiri, your tier 7 medium, I believe it is. <clears throat> There's just some changes to regards to the, the health increased. 
on some of the, the upgrades itself has been one of the main things. Uh, the, that's just a, a minor change to it. But that's pretty much a, a brief overlook of the actual patch notes that are coming through. That will be coming through tomorrow. So it will be get your Xbox or PS4 turned on now, download the update, and they'll sort things out. So these are some of the looks of the actual maps themselves. So you've got Sacred Valley. I'm going through. Uh, this is Highway. I believe that's Corellia. So they, they'll be there'll be some change whether that should look nice or not. I don't know. I still want the fact that the spawns need to be changed, spawns need to be balanced, and they need to actually try out the spawns before they do anything because they're a regular basis when things don't go according to plan. But I will pop this link in the description so you can have a, a read through yourself and see how they affect you specifically on the tanks you've got. Uh, and look forward to uh, playing it tomorrow. So thanks for your time today.